Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Steve Jones with McGraw-Hill, and I'm here to talk to you today about a report that we did about business value of BIM for infrastructure. Um, I've been in the industry my entire career. I was 20 years as an architect and three years with a technology company, and now I've been with McGraw-Hill for the last 11 years doing research on our industry. Uh, McGraw-Hill Construction is part of McGraw-Hill Financial overall. We have six different divisions, and uh, we're the largest of our kind in the construction industry in terms of uh, information. And hopefully you know us by some of our brands, uh, E&R, Dodge, Suites, Architectural Record. Part of my responsibility is to be developing research for us, and I've been working on these smart market reports for many years. And these are all free because they're sponsored, and so you can go to our analytics store and download any of these that you want to, the full copies of them, uh, on many different subjects. What I'm here to talk about today is one that we did about 18 months ago, just about looking at BIM and how it's being used for infrastructure. We've done studies since 2007 on how it's being used in the vertical market, uh, but it was really growing in terms of how it's being used in infrastructure. So with the help of Autodesk and with the ASCE, we did this study. And again, this is uh, the full version free for you at analyticsstore.construction.com. But I'll take you through some of the highlights today. At the time we did the study, uh, about half the BIM users out there were also using BIM for their infrastructure projects. And most of them were actually making models and using them for analysis and, and simulation. But in general, when you compare it to the vertical, the use of BIM for vertical markets is maybe two to three years behind. And you can see that here in the length of time that people have been using it for all project types. You know, those 43% of them had been doing it more than five years, but that drops to only 23% uh, who've been doing it that long for infrastructure projects. And most people really only had a couple of years experience here, one or two years in infrastructure. In terms of the implementation, which is the thing we measure once you begin using it for infrastructure, how much of your infrastructure work are you using it against? Uh, those who are using it for more than half of their infrastructure work, we consider those to be the really heavily committed groups. And we ask people to look back two years and how many of them were that really committed group, really only 16%, but that grew over time. And the projection two years in the future really is almost three times as many people. Over half are going to be using it for uh, over half of their infrastructure projects. So it's really getting a lot of traction among people who've begun to use it. And that's uh, across all these different types of projects, dams, wastewater, energy, rails. Um, in some cases, they're going to be tripling the amount of projects uh, that they're doing with BIM. So once people start using it for infrastructure, it really gets traction. And interestingly, when we looked at uh, the sizes of the firms and what they were reporting, it was the smaller firms who were reporting they were going to be increasing the fastest. And that may be because their projects tend to be smaller. Uh, nobody wants to or can really functionally introduce BIM in the middle of a project. So uh, the shorter duration and faster turnover projects probably makes them a little bit more nimble in terms of how many more projects they'll be doing. We also track uh, an awful lot about in all of our studies about BIM, about the benefits, the business benefits, because we believe that once the business benefits take hold, that's when something really gets traction as a standard operating process. And so in terms of these internal business benefits, the things that make your company more successful, an awful lot of people, once they get this capability, are finding it's extremely potent as a tool uh, against competitors uh, to bring in new business as well as some of the project process outcomes, like reducing rework and reducing errors and, and uh, omissions in documents. I'll give you an example of a great use of this for business development. Uh, there's a company down in Mexico called ICA, uh, biggest contractor down there. And they were competing for a design-build contract for a light rail system with nine stations going through the city of Monterey. And here's what you'll see. They took that proposed design and they stitched it incredibly well into helicopter video. Um, I've seen an awful lot of animations done uh, with BIM, but I've never seen anything done with this amount of clarity. Um, you know, in most cases, unless you knew that was a model, you'd think you were looking at the real light rail station in operation there. And so uh, needless to say, they were successful in their attempt to win this job. In terms of owners' angles on this, um, owners are reporting overall 
better project outcomes. They're seeing reduction in rework. They're seeing fewer litigations and claims. They're seeing reduced errors. You know, owners, once they go through a project like this where a lot of their work has been done in model format, they are very happy with it and they want to do more. In terms of those project-oriented benefits, uh, these are ones that people are getting at either a high or a very high frequency. You'll see spatial coordination, much like it is in vertical, um, is incredibly important, um, especially in these urban environments where there's an awful lot of work around existing uh, infrastructure that you have to weave your new work into and do uh, renovation work, too. Structural analysis is obviously very strong. And then here you'll see a very strong uh, vote towards greater client engagement. And I'll show you a couple of good examples of that. Um, if those of you who are familiar with Parsons Brinkerhoff's work in Seattle, putting in a, a tunnel to replace an above ground to, uh, double decker highway through the oldest part of Seattle, right along the, uh, the waterfront there, they were able to actually model everything underground and engage all of those important client groups in something that could have taken years to do, they were actually able to do much more efficiently because they could bring people right into the underground space and show we're here, the crown of the tunnel is proceeding under all the existing structure, all the existing foundations, all the existing utilities. They could actually demonstrate that they'd be able to do this. And they could actually show animation how that uh, underground drill uh, would work. It was very compelling. And then they were able to do, of course, a drive-through where they would fly down into the city. They built a model of the entire city of Seattle and took people all the way through the whole uh, several mile length of tunnel and were able to show the safety features and things of that nature. So incredibly compelling as a way to engage people by having modeled the work. And I'll show you another interesting um, infrastructure project done by my friends at Hatchmont McDonald where they were able to begin with a photograph of the site, all right, what the owner had, and show them then by bringing that into a model environment exactly how they would create this wastewater treatment facility here. And I'll let this play out and you'll see they were able to demonstrate exactly how it would get built and all the equipment that will be in it. Also very useful for working with contractors. Showing the rebar poured in place concrete, finishing it out, and very high resolution about all the interior equipment. So really no questions. The client completely engaged, and at the end, this is all they'd see, and they were able to stitch that right back into a photograph of the site. It's a very effective way to engage the client, very powerful tool when you have it in a model. So I encourage you to uh, go to the analytics store and download this report. There's a number of really amazing case studies. Uh, the cover stories about the Panama Canal. And there's some very interesting thought leader perspectives that we have interviews with people who have been in this industry a long time and have been driving the use of modeling in the industry. So again, this is a free digital copy at analyticsstore.construction.com. I encourage you to download it and take a look at all the other reports that we have there. They're free for your use. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Alex. Thanks, Steve. Can, can everybody see my screen? Not yet. Okay. There we go.